Hello, everyone, and thanks to the organizers. Uh, my name is Wen Tao, and I am a PhD student at the University of Illinois. Uh, I have been working on operating system testing research, so it's truly an honor for me to be here. And uh, today I'm going to present our work titled Making Linux Fly Towards a Certified Linux Kernel. The agenda is as follows. First, I will build up some background in terms of aviation software certification and DO70AC standard. I will explain the concept of SDC, Modified Condition Decision Coverage. I will then introduce our work of measuring Linux kernels MCDC. I will illustrate how the underlying LLVM club instrumentation works. And next, I will talk about the components of our infrastructure, namely the tool chain, our kernel support, and the test harnesses. And near the end of the presentation, I will also do a live demo. So in order to certify any software like Linux kernel or aviation purposes, we have to meet all these objectives listed in the DO70AC standard, uh, specifically it's table A7, which means we must be able to measure Linux kernels test coverage from using the most basic metrics like statement coverage to using more advanced ones like uh, data control coupling coverage or modified condition decision coverage. What we have been working on is this objective five MCDC. And in today's talk, I'm going to focus on how we enable uh, the measurement of MCDC for Linux kernel, as well as ensuring the tool's reliability. Uh, with these tools getting mature enough, one of the natural next steps is to actually improve the kernel test coverage and for this topic, uh, my team is going to give a separate talk in the testing MC. So anyone interested can please stay tuned. So let's first figure out what is this MCDC thing. Uh, I will explain the concept using this uh, simple made up example that has an if statement here. So MCDC focuses on logical expressions. Uh, specifically here, the predicate part of the if statement. In order to fully cover this expression, MCDC requires uh, us to cover both two conditions and to consider either of them being covered, uh, we need at least two test vectors. And what's more important, however, these two test vectors have to show that the condition can influence the decision outcome independently. So once again, what does this even mean? Before we get uh, even more confused, let me get, get a bit more concrete. And uh, let's suppose we have these four test vectors along with their truth table. So in order to cover condition one, we can actually run test vector two and three, in which case C1 changes from false to true. And it also results in the decision outcome changing from false to true as well. As a counter example, if we only run test vector zero and one, even though we've covered uh, both C1's true and false, but the decision outcome remains unaffected. That's why these two test vectors do not count. And that's where this third rule comes into play. And in a, in a similar sense, in order to cover C2, we can run test vector one and three, uh, in which case C2 changes from false to true. Uh, and at the same time, it also toggles the decision outcome. So in general, MCDC is a very rigorous and fine-grained coverage metric. It pushes the developers to write more comprehensive tests for their software. Uh, that's why it is enforced by many standards in safety critical industries like aviation and automotive. And now having this basic understanding of what MCDC is, let's, let's talk about how to measure it. In short, in this project, we have built the first infrastructure for measuring Linux kernels MCDC based on open source solutions. Our infrastructure has three key components. Uh, first and foremost, we use Kalong LLVM to compile and instrument the target kernel. 
Second, as for the target, we have been continuously testing with Linux mainline, but of course we have also uh, backported this feature to many stable branches in order to validate the functionality. And third, in order to cover a portion, a certain portion of the target code, we exercised some of the kernel testing techniques like KUnit, KSelfTest, and LTP. Having all these components, uh, the overall workflow is illustrated in this diagram, uh, including four steps. First, we compile and instrument the target kernel. Then we boot it in QMU. Next, within the virtual machine, we run some tests. And finally, we dump the profile and generate the reports. Uh, let's look at some results. Uh, for example, this screenshot is the summary page of kernel's coverage report and uh, in this rightmost column we are able to read this mcc measure uh, of linux kernel in addition to all the traditional coverage metrics and in the bottom row we also have these total numbers i will talk more about them later but here i want to point out uh, these are just some initial experiments so in general these numbers are rather low but it does open up the opportunities for future improvement in a more guided way. But we can also dive into specific code locations and uh, inspect the details. This example comes from this lib slash sort.c and at line 222, we have this simple expression uh, consisting of two conditions connected by, by a logical end operator. As the results suggest, one of the two conditions is covered, so the overall MCDC is 50%. And here is another uh, more complicated expression that consists of six conditions connected by a series of logical all operators and logical end operators. And in this case, all six conditions are indeed covered, so for this expression, the coverage is 100%. So are you, are you curious how, how we are able to get all this information? After seeing some of these coverage examples, uh, uh, I think it would be a good time to explain a little bit of its internals. And here is an illustration. So in order to measure any kind of coverage, the compiler would assign all sorts of counters and coverage mapping regions to the input, po in, to the input source code. Let's again use this uh, made up code snippet as an example. It, all of its coverage mapping regions can be displayed using these compiler flags, and I will walk you through them one by one. So in the first entry, we have this code region uh, corresponding to the code block within the curly braces, and the tool chain would keep track of how many times this curly brace is entered. And second, we have another code region uh, that corresponds to the predicate part of the if statement. And similarly, the tool chain would record how many times this whole expression is evaluated. And this is the same case for the first condition as well as the second condition. And beyond that, at the same locations, there's another type of code region called branch region. And for each of these branch regions, more information is being monitored. Specifically, the compiler, the tool chain would keep track of both how many times the true outcome is evaluated and how many times the false outcome is evaluated. And next, we have this second branch region. So the program is instrumented in such a way that we can eventually make sense of uh, condition coverage or so-called branch coverage. And moving forward, we have more code regions. This one corresponding to the first return statement, uh, next one corresponding to the final return statement. So after going over this uh, program, this full function, some of you may have noticed that not all of these conquerors are actually independent with each other. And that's true, and the compiler is smart enough to only maintain four of them, uh, namely this hashtag zero, one, two, and three, 
as highlighted in blue font. All the rest can actually be evaluated based on this for uh, either by some subtraction or identity relationship. Now, the only remaining step is just to insert, actually insert some code at these locations. And this is how these counters look like after being translated into intermediate representation or assembly code. They are essentially a sequence of three instructions. First, it reads the counter value from the memory, then it increments by one, and finally it writes this updated value back to memory. So after briefly illustrating the uh, coverage measurement, uh, let me talk about the components of our infrastructure. There are specifically, specifically threefold, the tool chain, our kernel support, and the test harnesses. As for the tool chain, we have been using open source Kalam LLVM, whose MCDC feature uh, was merged into its main branch this January. Their implementation is built on top of their own coverage mechanism called source-based code coverage, uh, which is different than GCOV. And unlike some of the traditional coverage metrics that utilize scalar counters, MCDC further requires bitmaps in order to track all those test vectors. And uh, just a few months ago, we have the first official LVM release that comes with this MCDC feature. Uh, even though most of the MCDC functionalities have already been in the main branch of LLVM, they're still in a very early stage. Uh, that's why we want to make sure the tools themselves can work correctly and reliably. So we have been actively testing and uh, uh, verifying this LLVM cough tool in collaboration with the LLVM community. We have so far contributed this many of uh, issues and the pull requests. Among all these bug reports and bug fixes, uh, I'd like to highlight two of them, uh, both of which were uncovered during our experiences of instrumenting Nemesis kernel, uh, which is arguably a very unique target considering all its complex code patterns and unusual coding styles. So in this first example, we hit some problems when dealing with an non-standard C syntax called a uh, statement expression, which essentially allows you to return some value within an anonymous uh, code block and assign it to some variables. Uh, in the second example, uh, we, uh, in the second example, we have some complex macros that utilize this token concatenation syntax in order to form some new variable names and new function names. Whenever we hit such problems, we analyze them, uh, report it to the community, and, uh, <clears throat> and sometimes even contribute our own fixes. It's such a good news that we can have an open source tool to measure MCDC, but the fact is, even with all these bug fixes, it does not work out of the box with Linux kernel. <clears throat> and that's why we needed the corresponding kernel support. The problem is we need some way of exporting those in-memory counters and in-memory bitmaps so that we can calculate the coverage after all. This task is straightforward in user space uh, because we can simply create a new file at the same directory as the executable and write that information into it. However, in kernel, uh, this is somewhat trickier because we don't have such concept as current directory or parent directory, because the file system is, is the very service that operating system has to provide to others. So instead, we need to write that information to a pseudo file system. But this exact piece of code is still missing there in Linux kernel. So in order to uh, fill this gap, uh, we implement this new coverage tool uh, in Linux kernel LLVM cough in parallel to the existing GCOV and the KCOV. So we add the kernel, kernel build system support and more importantly, this debug file system interface for accessing and resetting the profiles. 
for this part, we reuse part of the old PGO patch by Google developers uh, because we are sharing some common parts of the underlying tool. But here, our emphasis is for precise code coverage for high assurance, for example, MCDC, instead of their optimization purposes. So in this way, we have uh, make a Linux kernel compatible with our coverage tool. And we have also uh, publicly sent out this RFC patch and would like to receive more feedbacks. And finally, I will talk about the third component of our infrastructure, uh, that is the test harnesses. We conducted uh, a few parallel experiments in order to understand the adequacy of existing kernel tests. In the first row, we simply boot the kernel and immediately exit the virtual machine. And in the second, we also run all the K-unit tests during the booting process. And in the third group, we further include uh, those user space tests like K self test and LTP. So, as indicated in this table, within those covered portion of kernel code, the booting process alone already contributes more than half of it. And the, the improvement brought by K unit doesn't seem pretty much. On the other hand, uh, the K self test and LTP uh, look like more promising in terms of improving kernel code coverage. So in general, these numbers are relatively low at this moment, and uh, especially in terms of fine-grained metrics like MCDC. Um, this results, such results also call for more, more attention in this direction, and our infrastructure uh, can better guide future improvements in this direction. So yeah, actually that's all the slides contents. Uh, next, I will demonstrate in practice, how can we use the provided infrastructure to measure Linux kernels MCDC. And even before that, let me also demonstrate how to measure the coverage of a user space program, including its MCDC, so that we can better highlight the differences and the challenges in kernel space. Let me share my screen. So first in user space, uh, in this screen, under this user space directory, we have two files. For the first, we have this test.c, which is the same made up example we have seen many times in the slides. We are going to focus on this logical expression x greater than zero and y greater than zero connected by a logical end operator inside this foo function. And in the main function, uh, we're going to drive this foo function and we have all these test vectors zero through three, uh, which is also consistent with the table we've seen earlier this talk. And for the second file, well, we have this run.sh, uh, which is essentially the steps we need in order to measure the program's coverage. In fact, uh, for a program as simple as this, we can, it's relatively easy for us to even conceptually reason about its coverage. But the point here is we need some tool to do that automatically and scalably. So without further ado, let, uh, let, let me show how to do that. Uh, so the first step is compile and instrument the targeted program by invoking the compiler with all the regular compilation flags plus those flags for coverage measurement, namely F uh, profile instru generates F coverage mapping F coverage MCBC and the input file name and output file name. Now we should have obtained an executable test, uh, which looks fairly regular. The next step is just to execute this program. Uh, and we see no output to the terminal, which is quite expected. But what's happening under the hood is when this program exits, say at this return statement, 
some runtime routine are involved to connect all the in-memory uh, execution traces and write them to some profile. Let's see what we've got in this current directory. This. And this is what I'm talking about, this default profile row file. Uh, what we're going to do next is basically to analyze this row profile data and generate the coverage report by invoking the LLVM proof data merge and specify this input and the output to another uh, profile data file. So what this step does is to index this row profile data into a more organized format and optionally merge multiple copies of row profile data. So now we should have this newly generated default profile data. And actually both these two files can be uh, recognized by the file utility. For example, uh, running this command, uh, they, are at, they are correctly identified as some sort of LLVM profile data. And now the only remaining step is to just visualize it and uh, generate the coverage report uh, by invoking LLVM call show and pass this instrument profile flag with the default profile data and also pass the executable file as the first argument. And now we have this rudimentary coverage report with uh, line coverage only. Let's make things more fun by also include the branch coverage by supplying this flag show branches equal count. And maybe make it more clear like this. And now underneath this logical expression, we have this additional box that tells us about the branch coverage. And let's go step one step further to include MCDC. Yeah, now we have this second, even larger box to tell us detail, detailed statistics of MCDC. So all the steps I have shown are actually wrapped in into this run.sh. So whenever I want to modify this program, I can easily uh, run all the process uh, quickly by invoking this run.sh. And maybe make it more clear by clear first and pipe it to some head filter. Okay. So in this, uh, in this, in this fake software testing scenario, we unfortunately only achieve very poor coverage here. Most of them are not covered. So as we have discussed, if we run test vector zero and one, even though both C1's true and the false are covered, but in terms of MSDC, C1 is not considered covered because the decision outcome remains unaffected. So instead we need to run test vector two and three, and uh, let's check the effect. and invoke this run.sh. And now we can see that C1 is indeed covered, even in terms of MCDC. And in order to fully cover this expression, uh, we can maybe further include test vector one, and uh, let's verify the results. So congratulations, we've finally reached 100% for this fake soft software testing scenario. And that's the, actually the essential steps for measuring code coverage in user space. Now let's move to kernel. So here I have a pulled Linux source tree uh, based on some recent attacks. Uh, I guess it's a few weeks ago. Yeah, and it's patched with our kernel support. So the first step is still similar. We have to compile and instrument the target, but here the target is uh, Linux kernel. And instead of manually manipulating the command line, command line flags, here we rely on the kernel build system to do that uh, in a more consistent way. We basically uh, invoke the make LLVN equals one and the menu config. And let's find our options in this uh, 
configuration menu by searching the keyword LLVM cough underscore cough. And we have many heats. Let's go to the first one. So basically the options uh, on this screen are all added by our kernel patch. Uh, by enabling this first one, we are compiling that LLVM cough subdirectory. And for the second one, uh, if, we if we enable that, we are going to profile the entire kernel, except that some functions or some code might not lack us. And we are also going to respect the compiler, uh, the compiler attributes. And for the third one, we're going to further enable the MCDC instrumentation along with this, uh, along with this integer parameter that is adjustable. So with all these options set up, uh, the only remaining thing to do is just press the button and run this uh, make LLVM equals one. So on my machine, it should be quick because I have already built it before. Um, before moving to the next step, uh, just as a reminder, we have also enab enabled all the K-unit tests, most of the K-unit tests in this configuration so that we can demonstrate, measure its uh, coverage. And now here comes a, a major difference than the user space because we cannot simply uh, execute a kernel image, but instead we need to boot it either in a physical machine or in a virtual machine. Uh, in this demo, I'm going to uh, do the virtualized way using KVM and KEMU. So basically, uh, this queue uh, is a wrapper script around the KEMU, and when I press it, I'm going to boot the kernel, uh, boot the instrumented version of kernel. And in the boot message, we can see all this K-unit K test results. And now we should have entered this guest machine. Uh, let's verify it by check the kernel version. Yeah. So, and here comes another difference than the user space. Remember that in user space, the default profile role file will be automatically generated when the uh, program access, but here it's, uh, uh, it's not really achievable in kernel because first, we don't know when the kernel is going to terminate and hopefully never. And second, in kernel, we don't have that runtime support. So in order to get that profile, we have to explicitly fetch it and we're going to look for it under the debug file system pass under syskernel debug LLVM call. And here it is. And let's move it uh, to somewhere else so that we can later process it outside, outside this virtual machine. Uh, let's copy it to the current directory. And this current directory is mapped back to the host uh, through the NIP protocol. So when I exit this virtual machine, hopefully we can see the same file uh, on the host. Now simply press Ctrl D and now we are back to the host machine. And we should have this profile row. Yeah, and uh, once again, it's correctly identified by this file utility. Let's maybe uh, rename it to something more meaningful in the next uh, profile row. Yes. Okay, so the remaining steps would actually be mostly identical to user space. Basically, I'm going to run this command. So uh, we will first invoke LLVM cough data and LLVM cough show. One thing to note here is that remember uh, in user space, LLVM cough's first argument is that executable file, but here we're treating this VM Linux as if it is the executable. And now it's actually, uh, it, uh, it has already started running. On my machine setup, it, it usually takes uh, one to two minutes but before it finishes, after it finishes, we should hopefully get all those HTML coverage report. And in this screen, I have already uh, launched a temporary HTTP server. So let me actually open the browser and uh, navigate it. So these are the previous runs and this is still being generated. So. Let's first look at some of the previous rounds. 
So basically the summary page of kernel coverage report, uh, no surprise. And we can click into each directory and uh, each files. Maybe let's find the same example on the slides uh, in that string.c. And we can see the coverage uh, report alongside the source code, including line coverage, branch coverage, and most importantly, this MCDC. All right, that's actually the uh, the whole demo part. Um, actually, this link should uh, be accessible to all the audience, uh, and you can later check the QR code on the slides, and you can navigate this uh, coverage report. Now, get back to this slide. So, in summary, we are able to measure Linux kernels MCDC based on open source solutions. Uh, we have been continuously testing with Linux mainline, and we have also tested with a few stable branches. Uh, we have publicly, publicly sent out the RFC patch uh, and would like to receive more feedbacks. As the next steps, uh, we'll continue testing and improving the tools themselves and uh, especially reason about the reported the accuracy of the reported results and last but not least uh, we're going to uh, continue investigating investigating the other two coverage metrics uh, listed in the do 70 ac standard and eventually we can hopefully uh, fully certify linux kernel and make it fly Thanks. That's actually the end of my presentation. Uh, special thanks to the whole open source community. Excellent work, Wintel. It was really good. I, I'm really impressed with how well your live demo went. I, I don't think I've ever seen one go that well. Um, so just so we're clear, we've submitted those patches to the Linux kernel community, not as an RFC, but as a request to push yes. up the main line. So we've gotten just a little bit of feedback. There didn't seem to be a lot of disagreement. I wonder if you could speak to the no instar uh, feedback that um, Peter Zilstra asked. So he was wanted to make sure that when we instrument the kernel with LLVM cov, we're respecting the no instar. So could you uh, just briefly, for those who don't know, say what that is, and then tell us, are we respecting no instar? So uh, basically, when the Google developers were submitting their old PGO patch, there were some there were some compiler bu compiler bugs that those instrumentation do not respect those uh, compiler attributes. For example, no instrumentation, no profile. But uh, I think it all it has already been fixed like uh, just a few months after their submission, and now we are uh, actually correctly res correctly respecting those com uh, compiler attributes. And in the mailing list, I have provided the Goldbolt links uh, for some examples if we, if anyone wants to try out. Very good. So for the record, we're ready to go. As long as there's no other feedback, we're ready to push this up to the to, to Linus's to the yeah. yeah, sounds good. Excellent. Thank you. Question? Thank you for uh, the presentation. I have a very quick question. Does it, this coverage report uh, cover only C code or parts of the uh, Right now, only C code. But I believe Rust has already incorporated the same uh, infrastructure, uh, which is source-based code coverage. And they even support MCDC. But we haven't really uh, applied it in the kernel space yet. Sorry. The assembler code. Oh, you mean assembler code? No, no, no. It won't uh, go into the assembler code because we do the instrumentation at the front end and, and C or either C or Rust. Okay, thank you. But uh, is there any solution for making assembler for coverage? Uh, I guess uh, we, we eventually would rely on some kind of 
binary instrumentation or binary rewrite. And actually that would be a, a little bit close to this, another coverage metric, like the point is shown here, the object coverage in order to reveal those uh, code that's not, uh, that's not reflected in the source code level. So currently we don't have a, a like a working solution right now on our own side, but we will explore that direction. Uh, hi, uh, I have a question about where uh, are you doing uh, testing working mode Linux? Sorry, do you mean user mode Linux? Yes, the, the, the architecture of the M in the mode, the, which you can run as a process. Um, as yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, uh, one of the, one of the popular ways of running k units is to put it in the uh user mode right and uh, i think that, that that's a feasible way like uh, then the virtualization approach and to easily conduct more tests uh but we haven't really focused on that one uh we have mostly uh testing with uh kvm and uh, kimu uh, in this virtualized fashion and uh, we have also tested in physical machines but uh, so far we haven't uh, really uh, run it together with the UML. Any other question? Okay, well, oh, we're one more. Here we go. So, Wenzel, this is great for aerospace and safety critical, but could you speak to why everybody in the non-safety world would care? Why, why should they care about this? Why should the rest of the open source community care about this? So I think eventually we want to uh, improve the test coverage and uh, to to uh, better cover the Linux kernel code uh, would statistically provide more evidence that the, uh, the reliability is higher. So not only in safety critical uh, sections, but also like in cloud computing, uh, we people also do care about uh, reliability and high coverage. Okay, so, okay. I guess. And um, is the, the solution for the like, lack of ICDC is that like more K unit tests, is there more uh, integration tests? Is, like, what's the, I guess, outcome of this work? Like, getting the coverage in, incrementing it, running it, getting the reports? What with that afterwards? So that's a good question. So basically, as we've shown that MCDC is uh, much more rigorous than the uh, traditional coverage metrics like branch coverage, it basically encouraged the developers to write more tests to cover the code, uh, which is uh, harder, to, harder to cover in terms of this new metric and so that we can uh, guide future test writers to write better tests and make the coverage higher. So the, overall, so the effective results is to uh, urge developers to uh, add more tests, uh, no matter it's uh, within the kernel space like KUnit or so those issued from user space like LTP or KSELF test. Awesome. I, uh, I'm one of the maintainers for Thank you. Sure, like, no, I'm just trying to, like, answer the question. Like, I think, so Wintel's team, like, has another two talks tomorrow. Uh, one is seeing, like, the kernel, like, testing dependability session. Uh, they're actually talking about, like, you know, how do they, like, basically measure different coverages of, like, you know, the current test, uh, test week, including, like, you know, KUnit, LTP, and the KSELF test. And the, the situation is that, like, the test coverage is not that, like, you know, good, right? And one like you know immediate like you know, basically efforts like they are making is that like how do we like you know, basically enhancing existing test suite, which can cover like this part like you don't cover. And having like this metric is critical because you don't want to like reinvent the wheels, like just to write another test suite. You actually want to know what are the like you know, existing tests that cover well and what are they don't cover well. And then you can actually enhance the part like you know, to cover uh, hopefully like you know, well. And um, another talk like you when know, is giving is actually like discussing this um, kernel patch, which is a source based. Uh, code coverage like in the matrix and the idea is that when you do the compiler like in a based um, interpretation like you can actually understand the coverage report 
if you do it like you know, with the current like G code, it's really hard like you know, to even interpret the collision report like you know, by humans. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I was going to say, um, Wintel. Could you just briefly contrast? GCUB does MCD, but can you contrast what the GCUB's approach versus LLVM CUB's approach to MCD? So uh, one of the uh, most most important feature of this LLVM CUB is they're actually doing source-based code coverage measurement, and they're performing their instrumentation at the front end. So the mapping between all those coverage traces to source code remains uh, immutable uh, in the face of any level of optimization so that we can always trace those counters back to source code. However, in GCOF or even KCOF, they are performing their instrumentation at some later stage of the entire compilation pipeline. So many of the information is lost during the process and sometimes the coverage report they they present is actually confusing. And I'm going to uh, give some example in tomorrow's talk uh, with, with where GCOV uh, shows some, exhibits some uh, weird report. For example, some executed lines uh, show up after unexecuted lines or some uh, number of bunch oddity in their, in their report. Uh, quick question. Uh, more than a question is, uh, uh, um, say, your perspective in the next future, because I know that the kernel CI is running code coverage on uh, with uh, high frequency. Do you plan to uh, interact with the uh, kernel CI <coughs> team to run this uh, new say, code coverage matrix? No? On, uh, yeah, yeah, that would be kernel. very desirable. Yeah, I actually uh, noticed that in the CKI by Red Hat, they're producing some GCOV reports, right? Mm -hmm. But not for all of the builds or tests. Uh, I would actually uh, be very uh, uh, happy to see that uh, more tests or more builds are providing their coverage reports so that we can uh, actually see the evolution uh, over time or over different kernel versions. And of course, our source based, this LLVM call or source based code coverage can. Uh, like I said, uh, would sometimes provide more informative informative results than the existing GCOV and KCOV. Okay. Is that it for questions? Okay. Thanks very much, Wen Tao.